What is up my friends, welcome back to another video. And today we are taking a look at another sample library called Fluid Brass by Audio Imperia and Performance Samples. So I believe this is their second collaboration at the moment, the first one being Chorus, the choir library. And so this one is a little more niche, right? Because it's just focused on repetition sampling, uh, being able to play very fast notes, and there's a lack of legato, you don't, you don't get sustains, you don't get marcados. It's all focused on more like staccatissimo articulations. And uh, we're gonna see how that kind of fares here in a minute. It. But before we do that, I have a quick thank you to Audio Imperia, Yan, for sending me a copy to take a look at for you guys. Always appreciate it. Yan is a wonderful person, wonderful developer. I'm not just saying that. Like, I've literally interacted with a bunch of developers, and Audio Imperia is definitely up there with the best in terms of support and um, interactivity, you could say. But anyway, let's kind of go over the key features of this library. So first of all, the intro price is $79 with the uh, regular price being $99. You can think of that as you will um, for strict repetition sampling that's done in a very fluid manner. Um, you might find this worth it if it's a really, you know, a, a missing tool in your arsenal. But if you already have other stuff that covers really short notes, then maybe it's not as worth it for you. You can make up your own mind on that. Um, but these are all new samples, so all new recorded brass. So two trumpets, two horns, um, two tenor trombones, two bass trombones, and one tuba. So relatively small sections to create that definition in the sound. Five mic positions, closed section, A, B, wide, and ambient. Six dynamic layers and up to 10 round robins. That's a quite impressive number. Uh, faster speeds automatically triggered uh, based on your playing speed. So the faster you play, the, the more fluid it's going to get, and the system will work that out. 26 gigabytes installed. I find this a little bit larger than what I would expect for a library of this uh, type, but hey, I mean, maybe maybe that, that's encapsulated with all the different types of samples in there, so that's understandable as well. One really cool thing though, one perk, is that it's made for the free contact player, so you don't need the full version of contact for this, which might be very appealing for you, so... Um, yeah, just keep that in mind. And then there's a little bit of an overview. They tell you about all the stuff and then there's some recommended products at the very bottom. So without further ado, let's kind of dive in. I've pulled up the patches here and here's the library and the contact player. You can see the patch listing is very, very simple. Trumpets, horns, tenor trombone, uh, bass trombones, and then the tuba. And then I've also loaded in an extra horns patch at the very bottom just to go through a couple of the mic positions so we can hear the differences. But without further ado, I'm just gonna stop talking. We're just gonna play through the samples one at a time. And then uh, at the very end, I'll share my thoughts with you. So here we go. Thank you. 
All right, so just before we dive into the mics, um, really quick overview of these different patches. And you hear how, no matter how quickly I played, the patches essentially kept up pretty well. Um, the, the hall itself does sound a little bit larger. So if you really want, you can always turn down the reverb a little bit. And even if it's turned all, all, off all the way, I should say, you're still gonna get that nice um, signal from the hall, right? Because that's just the way they're naturally recorded, especially if you're using these microphone positions. So you really don't need all the external reverb if you want. Um, that's always the option to turn it off here. Now, you might be thinking, well, how practical is this library? Because we're really just using these Staccatissimo samples and without any sustains or any mercados or any sort of adjustable length, how practical is that in your arsenal? And I say it really depends on the other libraries you already have. So for me, I use something like Cinematic Studio Brass at the moment for a lot of my quick samples because they have some really beautiful repetition shorts that you just don't get in libraries like Cinebrass or uh, Berlin Brass, for example. Even though they, those have nice shorts, they're not as snappy, in my opinion, as CSB. So I find myself using that library. But now that we have a dedicated library like this that can actually handle these repetition samples in a very fluid manner, it's actually designed for this purpose, and I think it does it really well, I could see myself using this library to play a few notes, da -da -da -da, but then that longer note, I'd probably substitute with something like CSB or Cinebrass, maybe Cinebrass be actually, because it has that similar sound signature, that more open, detailed, warm sound that um, you, know, you don't really find in CSB as it's a little bit darker. So I think it's a layering game in this case. You know, you could play these fast repetition samples in the background, but if you need that long sustained note, like that punctuates the end of a phrase, then you are going to need another library. So I think a really cool update for this library potentially could be maybe just even just two additional sample lengths, maybe um, a, a more mar marcato type of length. So if this is considered like a 16th note, maybe something like a quarter note or a half note. And then I think another cool articulation would just be a regular sustain. So Maybe they hold it for five seconds, let's say, um, sampled in, let's say, three, four dynamic layers. And then you can always key switch trigger uh, the alternative samples, the longer samples to finish off your phrase, right? That would add a little bit more flexibility. But again, I maybe, maybe they just wanted to only focus on this because they wanted to get the engine right and they wanted to make sure that they didn't blow up on the sample space. They just wanted to get the necessary stuff in there. So it's all a balancing act when you're developing libraries, of course. But anyway, hopefully that that uh, makes sense. So before we wrap up here, let me just show you um, the close mic and then I'll show you what the ambient mic uh, sounds like so you get an idea of the closest and the farthest positions. Here we go. And there you go. You really don't need the external reverb here, in my opinion. Like that ambient position alone just gives you so much depth to the hall, and you lose a little bit of definition in the instruments naturally, right? But the best type of reverb is the natural reverb that's included in the library. So you really do not need the external reverb unless you're really trying to wash it out. Then go, you know, go for it. But yeah, um, the other thing I want to comment on really quickly is the dynamic range. So this library in particular feels like it really accentuates the higher dynamics, anything from forte above, it kind of leans into that a little bit more. So I had to really focus on playing um, lightly with a lower velocity to get that softer dynamic layer across. Whereas it was really, really easy to simply get those blaring notes um, out 
just simply by playing a little bit faster, a little bit harder, right? So you can feel the intention of this library. It, it, it really suits itself well to um, this sort of faster style playing, especially with the repetition notes. But do keep in mind that it is relatively wet. So if you want to make sure the definition in those samples is retained while you play the faster notes, then you might want to choose slightly closer mic positions. You want might want to push up the close a little bit, turn down the tree, you know, uh, whatever it is, A, B mics, right? And uh, you can adjust to your taste there. But yeah, sample libraries in general are really interesting because everything is a mixing and matching game. Unless you're play, uh, sorry, unless you're using like all the libraries from one specific developer, but even then you might have different functionality within those libraries from that developer, right? But yeah, mixing and matching libraries is always something to pay attention to, especially if some libraries are recorded more, more wet in larger halls and they really capture that room hall sound versus if they're drier, like VSL's traditional stuff, um, you have to create your own room and get that to sit with wetter libraries, right? So that's something we do have to consider. But when developers give us these options of microphone positions, it allows us to tweak to our own taste, which is a really cool thing to do. And we don't need external reverb necessarily if the built-in hall sound is suitable enough, right? So just keep that in mind. Um, you know, just to retain definition, you do want to make sure that you play around with the mic microphone positions a little bit so it doesn't get washed out. That's uh, super important to consider. But yeah, thank you so much for watching. Uh, I can definitely recommend this library for those faster passages, especially if you already uh, don't have something already that covers this territory. And if you are interested in seeing more of my personal sample library recommendations, what I use on a daily basis, and just see everything in a nice digestible PDF guide, then I want to give that to you absolutely free. It's my sample library buyer's guide, and this is where I basically talk about all my personal favorites, including strings, woodwinds, brass, and percussion. There's also piano libraries. I put some ethnic libraries and jazz libraries in there. It really is the one stop shop you need to look at sample libraries if you're interested in orchestral music i put this together for you absolutely free so just click the link below i want to give it to you as a gift for watching this video and you can download it right away so thank you so much for watching i really appreciate it and i'll catch you in the next one take care my friend Bye bye